Have you heard the big news that's shaking up the mining world and has people across the continent talking? Grab your seats, because this story is hotter than the Sahara at high noon. Naija, our West African brother, just dropped a bombshell on a French mining giant. That's right. The military government under General Tiani has yanked the permit for one of the world's biggest uranium mines right out from under Orano, a French company that's been operating in the country for over half a century. But before we get into the juicy details, let me ask you this. Have you ever felt like foreign companies are taking advantage of Africa's resources? Drop a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Now imagine you're sitting on a gold mine in your backyard but your neighbor's been digging it up and keeping most of the profits for years. How would you feel? Well, that's kind of what's been happening in Niger with its uranium. And folks, the tables have turned. Let's break down this story and see why so many Africans are cheering this move. But first, a little background music to set the mood. All right, let's rewind a bit. Naija has been one of the world's largest uranium producers for years. And at the heart of this story is the Imuraren mine, a massive deposit with an estimated 200,000 tons of uranium. That's enough to power a small country for decades. Orano, the French company, had big plans for this mine. They were supposed to start digging back in 2015, but here's where things get interesting. The price of uranium took a nosedive after the 2011 Fukushima disaster in Japan, and suddenly, Orano wasn't so eager to get started. Fast forward to July 2023, and boom, the country's military takes control in a coup. Now, I know what you're thinking. Another coup in Africa? But hold on, because this one's got a twist. The new government started flexing its muscles, especially when it came to foreign mining deals. They gave Orano an ultimatum. Start working on the Imuraran mine by June 19th this year, or lose your license. Orano tried to beat the clock. On June 11th, just a week before the deadline, they announced they'd started work. But guess what? Too little. Too late. Nija's government wasn't buying it. Now here's where it gets really interesting. The military leaders has been distancing itself from France and cozying up to Russia. Sound familiar? It's a trend we're seeing across the Sahel region. But let me ask you this. Is this just about changing partners? Or is it about Africa finally standing up for itself? Many Africans are applauding the latest move. They see companies like Orano as neo-colonial resource exploiters. For years, these foreign firms have been extracting our continent's wealth, leaving behind environmental damage and unfulfilled promises of development. But is kicking out foreign companies the answer? Let's look at both sides of the coin. On one hand, Nija is asserting its sovereignty over its natural resources. It's saying, hey, these are our minerals and we should benefit from them. This resonates with many Africans who feel their countries have been getting a raw deal for too long. On the other hand, mining uranium isn't child's play. It requires advanced technology and expertise. Can they go it alone, or will they just end up partnering with another foreign power, like Russia? Now, Orano isn't taking this lying down. They're talking about legal action, saying this decision will hurt the region's development. But many, many are asking, what development? After 50 years of French companies mining uranium, Niger remains one of the poorest countries in the world. So, my fellow Africans, what do you think? Is this a bold step towards true independence or a risky move that could backfire? Even before answering all these questions, Orano's threat of legal action against their host is contentious. While they claim the decision will harm regional development, their inaction for years raises questions about their commitment. Morally, Orano's position is weak, given their failure to develop the mine as promised. They could argue that Orano's delays have already hurt development. Moreover, Orano should not push the military leaders in Naija into taking more severe action against the company. For example, 
several African countries have nationalized foreign-owned assets over the past decades as part of efforts to assert economic sovereignty, and Niger has that option. Here are some notable examples. In 1969, Muammar Gaddafi's government nationalized foreign oil companies' assets, while Algeria nationalized French oil companies' assets in 1971, while Zambia nationalized foreign-owned copper mines in the 1970s, Tanzania nationalized foreign-owned sisal plantations and other assets in the 1960s. Other examples included Ghana nationalizing foreign-owned gold mines in the 1960s under Kwame Nkrumah, and Egypt nationalized the Suez Canal in 1956 under Gamal Abdel Nasser. Most recently, Zimbabwe implemented land reform policies in the early 2000s that effectively nationalized foreign-owned farms. These nationalizations had mixed results, often leading to initial economic disruptions, but also asserting national control over key resources. However, the situation highlights the complex dynamics between resource-rich African nations and foreign companies. Niger might have grounds to countersue for lost opportunities and economic damages due to Orano's prolonged inaction. Ultimately, this dispute underscores the need for more equitable resource agreements that prioritize host countries' interests. Before you answer, let's consider a few more points. Uranium is crucial for nuclear energy. With the world trying to move away from fossil fuels, could Niger be positioning itself as a key player in the green energy transition? This isn't just about Niger. Other African countries are watching closely. Could we see a domino effect across the continent? And what about the environmental impact? Uranium mining can be dangerous. Will a new operator prioritize safety and sustainability? These are big questions, and the answers could shape the future of not just Niger, but all of Africa. Now, I want to hear from you. Do you think Niger made the right call? Should other African countries follow suit? Or is there a middle ground, a way to work with foreign companies that truly benefits African nations? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're fired up about this topic, hit that like button and share this video with your friends. Let's get this conversation going across Africa. Before we wrap up, here's a quick recap. Niger's military government has revoked Orano's permit for the Imuraran uranium mine. This move comes amid growing tensions between Niger and France. Many Africans see this as a stand against neo-colonial resource exploitation, but questions remain about Niger's capacity to develop the mine independently. As we watch this story unfold, one thing's clear. Africa is changing. We're no longer content to sit back and watch our resources benefit others, but the path forward isn't simple. It'll take wisdom, courage, and unity to truly harness our continent's wealth for the benefit of all Africans. What do you think the future holds? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and keep pushing for a better Africa. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.